The day of the accident, he was fooling around. I mean, with me. He was coming on to me. What? He was coming on to me. Partner, we've got our water gate. wraps up the news for this evening. Stay tuned for Music Till Midnight. We'll be back then for the Midnight News. What a joke. What? The news. The news is a joke. You learn about as much from that as you do a presidential debate. I mean, what did we find out from the news? Found out uh, there was a train wreck in France, a plane crash, people fell off a sailboat, presumed drowned, Oh, and a secretary says she slept with a senator, followed by some very bad jokes by the weatherman. <laughs> they call that the news. That's what the people want, I suppose. Yeah, little kids want candy all the time, but you don't give it to them. You do if you're selling them the candy. Thank God for newspapers. Why? How many people read them? I mean, really read them. How many people read anything anymore? Video stores are crowded. No big long lines in the library. <laughs> Getting worse all the time. How do you turn it around? In the home when kids are young. Turn off the set and read to them. Let them experience the wonders of words. What if the parents don't read? Then they have an obligation to their children to learn. What do you mean, go back to school? Yeah, that's right, go back to school. They got classes in the evening. Turn right up here, we're gonna take the freeway. Where are we going anyway? Back to school. Another outstanding Blue Jay banner. Well, how could we miss with the lead article on teenage sex? Come on, it's in the writing. If we keep it up, one day it'll be McCormick and Rollins receive Pulitzer. <laughs> Why not? How come your name always goes first? Sounds more rhythmical that way. That's a matter of opinion. All right, how about alphabetical order? M comes before R? How about I change my name to Anderson? We'll talk about it, okay? For right now, we gotta meet my dad. He wants us to meet the journalism sub. That's just what we need, a sub. No problem. We'll keep the guy in line.
Gentlemen, welcome. I'm the principal, Bill McCormick. Pleased to meet you, Jonathan Smith. Mr. Smith. Mark Gordon. Mark, how are you? Please have a seat. Thank you. I uh, appreciate very much both of you substituting for us on such short notice. You come very highly recommended, so I know you'll demand the best from our kids. Now, Jonathan, in addition to teaching English, you'll be serving as advisor for the school newspaper. That is an activity that is near to my heart because my son, Colin, is co-managing editor. Well, terrific. I'm looking forward to it. Good. And, Mark, we have a full schedule for you, too. I understand I'll be teaching phys ed. <laughs> well, <laughs> you got half of that right. The subject you will be teaching is sex ed. Se uh, uh, sex ed? Uh, well, I, re I really wasn't planning on that. I mean, that's... Really not my thing, you know. Well, come on, Mark. You've taught sex ed before. I know that, Jonathan. You were great at it. Thank you. Excuse me. Yes. Oh, good. Send them in. Jonathan, there's a couple of fellows I'd like you to meet. Hi, Dad. Hi, son. Mr. Smith, Mr. Gordon. This is my son, Colin, and his co-editor, Doug Rollins. Pleased to meet both of you. Hi. Mr. Smith, these two young men have written top-notch articles on everything from the homeless to teenage sexuality. And I don't mind telling you that last subject was not an easy one to get past the school board. Yeah, I can imagine. Looks like you two have quite a champion here. Yeah, we sure do. Mr. McCormick, I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, what is it? A school bus has had an accident. It appears to be serious. Oh, my dear God. <laughs> I'm just a little shaky, that's all. Can you answer a few questions for the paper? Yeah, all right. You're Ellen, right? Yes, Ellen Cahill. Yeah, we were in the same biology class last year. Can you tell us what happened? It was just so strange. The bus just went right off the road. Honey, are you all right? I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Anybody hurt? One of the kids has a broken leg. I think maybe that's the worst of it. Oh, I heard about the accident on the radio, and I, I left the baby with mom and I came as fast as I could. Honey, I'm glad you came. I'm glad you came. You're real lucky. Hey, you kids, get away from there. That's gasoline coming out of there. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, well, thanks a lot, Ellen. We're going to talk to the bus driver. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Did you notice my interviewing technique? Woodward and Bernstein would have been proud of them. Do you realize you mention those guys every day? Mr. Nichols? Yeah. Brett Williams with Leading News. Can you tell us what happened? Well, yeah, I was, uh, I was coming up this curve here, just like I do every morning. And, uh, well, but as soon as I took my foot off the pedal, the uh, bus just took off like a shot. The pedal must have stuck somehow. I don't know. And after that, Mr. Nichols? Well, I jumped on the brake, but it was too late. We went right over. Did you do that? Yeah. Bus driver just said the pedal stuck. That's what caused the accident. So. so if the gas pedal stuck like that, maybe the bus company didn't maintain the bus. I mean, you hear about sloppy maintenance all the time, you know, with airplanes, trains. Doug, there could be a big story here. So where do we start? Bus yard. Come on, let's hit it. Now, I'm going to tell you kids exactly what I told the cops. Those school buses are kept in A1 shape. My own kids ride them. But the driver, Larry Nichols, said the gas pedal stuck. Well, if the gas pedal stuck, we're going to find out why. You said if. Do you mean maybe it didn't stick? Well, it's hard to... Don't you put words in my mouth. What my colleague means is, isn't it in the realm of possibility that it didn't stick? 
Well, why don't we wait till they finish checking out the bus? What about Larry Nichols? Is he a good driver? Well, Larry's been working for me for seven years and I never had a problem. Well, maybe you can tell us what kind of person he is. You know, something about his character? His character? He's a nice guy. He's a family man. He's a good worker. Look, you want to know anything else about Larry? You ask Larry. Thanks. Hey, Larry. Yeah. Uh, we're doing an article for the school paper on the bus accident. Can we talk to you? Oh, look. You guys, I'm pretty stressed out about all that. Uh, another time, okay? Well, this won't take very long. But you guys got to know that reporters have been coming out of the woodwork. I'll tell you what, why don't you read the article in the Daily Register? I told everything to them. Well, we like to do our own reporting. <sighs> yeah, but I just don't feel like going over it again. Does that mean you're refusing to talk to us? You know, I think you're getting a little pushy here. And I'm wondering why you don't want to talk to us. You know, kid, I don't like your attitude. He's hiding something. Are you sure? No, but I'm hoping. Hey, Frida. How you doing? Well, Larry, I didn't expect you back today. Well, I left my wallet and stuff in my locker back here. How you feeling? Well, I did a bunch of interviews, and, and then I had to take the blood test, and, and then I get back here, and a couple of kids from the school paper nail me outside. You know, Frida, you should have heard them. And they talked to me like I'm some kind of a criminal or something. I did hear them. They were in here pushing for a story. Oh, boy. Well, I'm going to go change. Larry, you want to take the day off tomorrow? Nah. No, I'll, I'll be fine. But thanks anyway. I appreciate it. Hello, Etta. This is uh, Frida from the bus yard. Etta, who can I talk to about a couple of kids working on the school paper? Okay, thanks. I'm on, Mr. Gordon. Well, I guess you could have read that off the board. Well, I'm going to be teaching your class for the next few weeks, so I imagine we're going to be talking about sex. <laughs> okay, what do you want to know? <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, well, how, how, how far have you gotten in your books? We're up to the chapter I'm getting pregnant. You're getting pregnant. <laughs> well, that should be easy. Uh, uh, no. Uh, uh, look, I'll take the role. I'll, I'll, I'll take the role. Um, uh, uh, Stephen Addison? Hey, ready, willing, and able. Uh, Ellen Cahill. Ellen Cahill, is she here? No, oh, not here. Uh, David uh, Cutler. I'm here. Good. Oh, boy. <laughs> Jonathan. Yeah. Do uh, you mind if I walk with you? No, well, not at all. So, uh, how are Colin and Doug doing with their investigation? Well, that's a little early to tell. I did get a call from Frida Wallace at the bus yard, though. It seems the boys have been just a little too aggressive in their interviews. I talked to him about it. I uh, prefer to use the word assertive. And it's a, a trait I have worked very hard to instill in Colin. The boy's doing just fine. I can understand you being proud of your son. Oh, I am very proud of him. That boy has what it takes. You know that uh, he and Doug are up for the City Council Youth Achievement Award this year? Oh, yeah, Colin told him. Good. I just want to make sure that you don't put any kind of damper on either of those kids. You know what I mean. I'll certainly use my best judgment, of course. Do 
you realize we've come up with absolutely nothing? Nada. Partner, we're just warming up here. Yeah, well, maybe the bus accident was just that. An accident. You read about accelerator pedals sticking all the time. Douglas, can you imagine Woodwin and Bernstein giving up? If you mention those guys one more time... Excuse me? Hi. Hi. Can I talk to you two about something? Sure. It's about the bus accident. What about it? I can only talk to you if you promise not to tell anyone who I am. No problem. No, I mean it. If you use my name, I'll deny it. Reporters never divulge their sources. You're safe, I promise. It's about the bus driver. What about it? Well, he doesn't pay a lot of attention when he drives. He fools around sometimes. Fools around? The day of the accident, he was fooling around. I mean, with me. He was coming on to me. What? He was coming on to me. Could you explain what you mean by that exactly? He was goofing around. You know, he kept staring at me and winking at me in the rearview mirror, giving me these looks. And that's when the bus went off the road. Did he just come on to you all of a sudden? No, he's done it before. He's even said things to me. What kind of things? I don't want to say it's too gross. And the worst thing about it is that he's married. I saw his wife at the accident. We saw her too. Listen, Ellen, how long has all this been going on? For a while. Maybe two months. And I really, I don't... Look, maybe we should go someplace more private. I think I should go. But we still want to talk to you. I don't know. Remember, you promised not to let anyone know who I am. I mean, I wouldn't want Larry coming after me or anything like that. Don't worry, you have our word. Okay. Partner, we've got our water gate. Smith ticks me off. Who does he think he is? Hey, he's just trying to do his job. Well, his job is being a teacher. We're the reporters. We've got a story here, and he won't let us print it. Not until we get more facts. That's a lot of bull. He's messing with my First Amendment rights. Well, I'm not giving up. This story's too big. We could, we could sell it for a TV movie. Hey, you think so? I know so. People love this sordid kind of stuff. Why else would they watch a jerk like Geraldo Rivera? How you doing, Larry? Did you guys ever hear about a man's home being his castle? Yeah, well, this is real important. Yeah, what is it? One of the kids from the bus has accused you of causing the accident. Oh, wait a minute. You, uh, you want to run that by me one more time? This girl on the bus said your mind wasn't on your driving. She says you were coming on to her. And you've also been saying obscene things to her for a long time. What? This is crazy. Who is she? We're not at liberty to say. Oh, don't give me that, bull. What you're saying is pretty serious, and I've got a right to know. Why don't we just stick to the issue? Because as far as I'm concerned, there is no issue. I haven't done anything wrong. Larry? Is everything all right? It's all right, honey. Now listen, if you're not gonna say who is accusing me, then you've got no right to say diddly squat. Now why don't you get off my property? Remember, we gave you a chance to explain your side. Hey, I don't know what that girl said, but I haven't done anything. I'm not in the habit of fooling around with teenagers. Now get out of here, now! What's going on, honey? Nothing, nothing, nothing going on. Come on, Ellen. 
one. We just need a little more information. Could you please stop following me? This is too important. Listen, you told us Larry said obscene things to you. Do you know if anybody else heard it? No, I don't. Ellen, we don't have enough to get this done. Is there anything you haven't already told us? Yeah, like, did he do anything else? Look, I don't want to say. He did, didn't he? Didn't he? Well, he... What is it? Talk to us. What else did he do? Are you sure you'll never mention my name? You can trust us. We already told you that. I don't know if I can say it. Tell us. He... He touched me. What? I don't want to say anything else. Ellen, you can't let him get away with that. When did he touch you? The first time I was the last one on the bus after school. I hate him. I hate him. Hey, Doug. Colin. Ernie. Say, I've been reading your articles in the school paper. Jimmy brings them home all the time. You two guys are making a real name for yourselves. We're trying. That's why we're here. We'd like to talk to you. Me? You're going to do a story on me? Well, maybe someday, but not right now. Ha, 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 ha. Shucks. Listen, do you think you could give us some information on Larry Nichols? You know, the guy who had the accident with the school bus? Larry? I've known him since he was your age. Good kid. Oh, so as far as you know, he's never been in any real trouble. No. Well, there was that one silly mess years ago, but nothing ever bad. Silly mess? Yeah. Well, Larry was going to night school and getting his high school diploma. Couldn't have been more than 21. This was long before he met his wife now. Anyway, he uh, kind of had a crush on Mel Hudson's daughter, Wendy. She was a senior at Jefferson High. A high school student? Yeah, that was the problem. See, Mel was overly protective of Wendy, her being 17 and all. Well, Larry took her out one night, kept her out too late. Mel got all out of joint and called the cops, pressed charges against Larry for contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Contributing to the delinquency of a minor? Yeah, well, Mel cooled down eventually and dropped the charges. Uh, like I said, it was all pretty silly. Well, listen, kids, I got to scoot. Okay, thanks, Ernie. You keep up those articles now. Can't wait to see the look on Smith's face now. Well, what'd you think? I'm sorry, Colin. I can't let you run it. Why not? The stuff Bernie Parsons told us nails it. Oh, no, it doesn't. You're jumping to conclusions. Yeah, but there's a real pattern here. Larry Nichols was fooling around with young girls 15 years ago. That's right, 15 years ago. He was 21 years old and he went out with a girl who was 17. Well, that's all he did was go out with her. You don't know he did anything out of line. The charges were dropped. Lots of newspapers would go with what we have. Oh, you bet they would, son, but that doesn't make it right. Yeah, but if we don't move on it, somebody will scoop us. Well, I'm sorry. You're just gonna have to take your chances with it. Doug, we gotta get the story out. Smith is spoiling everything. Yeah, but unfortunately, the dictator, I mean the teacher, gets the final word. But we can't just drop it. Well, I see Woodward and Bernstein are still working. Boys wanna lift them on the way home. Thanks, Dad. I think we're gonna be here for a little while. All right. Keep slugging. Now you've got your dad using that Woodward and Bernstein line. Doug, I know what I want to do. I want to print what we have on Larry Nichols. <laughs> Don't tell me, tell Smith. We tried that. Now I'm going to print it without Smith's approval. You've got to be kidding. I'm not kidding. My father will back us. Are you sure? He stood behind us on the sexuality article, didn't he? Yeah, but that's a complete... Come on, partner, subject. let's go for it. I need some time to think about this. If we don't act on it now, I know we'll be sorry. Can't you see that? Doug, we're reporters. It's our duty. We have to do this. I don't know. 
I'm going to print it. You want your name off the store you're on? Get to work, partner. But you had no right to go behind my back. Maybe we made an end run, but we had no choice. The article is important to this school. Oh, come on, what you printed was irresponsible. It's nothing but innuendo. You didn't even bother to print the fact that the charges against Larry Nichols were dropped. Very, very convenient. How about if we print that in the next issue? Oh, it's going to be printed in the next issue of the banner. But neither one of you are going to have anything to do with writing the copy. You're no longer managing editors. You can't do that. I can't? Well, let me tell you something. Son, it's already done. You two will be lucky if you cover the school picnic. I should have never listened to you. Relax. I told you my father would back us on this. Jonathan, I, uh, I'm asking you to reinstate the boys. I'm sorry, I can't condone their actions. Well, I, I, I grant you, they, they should have communicated with you. Communicated? They went behind my back. I, I know that. I know that. They, they made a mistake. But I know my son. I know his feelings about the First Amendment rights. The First Amendment rights don't give them the license to destroy the life of an innocent human being. Now, wait just a minute. I hardly think you can call Larry Nichols innocent. The man has a background of this kind of thing. Come on, what background? The old police charges against him were dropped. Charges are dropped against guilty people every day. Besides that, the girl on the bus didn't make up the story out of whole cloth. The girl on the bus refuses to come forward. She is obviously frightened, so she went to her peers. Look, Mr. McCormick, I can see we are not going to agree on how to handle this situation. Well, then, you and I will have to uh, agree to disagree. I'm sorry, Jonathan. Those boys will have their First Amendment rights. As of now, I am reinstating them as managing editors. That is the end of this discussion, Mr. Smith. This whole thing is ridiculous. My husband did nothing wrong. She finished the bottle. Look, we have nothing more to say about it. Not another one. It's endless, honey. Maybe we should get an unlisted number. That register sure did a number on us, reprinting that stupid high school story. I'd give anything to know who that girl is. <laughs> I've been racking my mind. I've been trying to come up with something, but I just keep coming up with zero. But why would she say these things about you? Diana, I already told you. I don't know. I just don't know. You're beginning to have doubts about this, aren't you? you you're beginning to believe this crap, aren't you? I mean... Look, it's only natural to question why a young girl would say what she's saying. Well, are you asking me if I'm telling you the truth? No, it's not that. Then what? Well, are you telling me everything? Oh, that's great. That's just great. I mean, now you're beginning to sound like all the callers. Look, we're dealing with a teenage girl here. Maybe she misinterpreted something. There's nothing to misinterpret because nothing happened. Do you hear me? Nothing happened. Happened. And that's one more, trying to f dig up dirt. Uh, 
Mr. Nichols? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to ask you to come downtown with us. It's about the accident and the allegations in the paper. Are you kidding me? Those are just anonymous charges. I mean, kids making up a story. Yes, sir, but we've had a lot of calls from concerned parents. You're gonna have to come with us. Doug, it's me. They just let Larry go. I don't know what they found out, but here's what I want to do. Early tomorrow morning when he pulls up to school, I want to be right on him. 7.30 sharp. See ya. Larry Nichols was questioned for over an hour, but the chief of police declined to discuss the nature of those questions with us. Leading News will bring you an update on the Nichols situation as soon as we receive it. Oh, Larry? Yeah? I need to talk to you. Frida, this is about that school paper. No, it's more than the school paper, Larry. I don't know how to tell you this. I have been getting a lot of pressure put on me. And I... I, um... I'm gonna have to let you go. You got to understand, I've been getting a lot of flack from parents. I hear they're even uh, starting a petition against you. Frida, look, I, I, I've got a wife. I've got a baby that I have to feed. I know. I know it, and it kills me. But, you know, I could lose the, the whole school contract over this. I swear to you, I didn't do anything wrong. I believe you, Larry. And I'm sorry, but there's nothing else I can do. this morning. Something Larry Nichols getting canned. Nichols got fired? Yep, he's out of here. We did it. We actually did it. They asked Larry. Ha. Th there's our headline for the next banner. Why wait? Let's get a special edition out right now. We can scoop the registry. You mean now the photocopy room isn't open yet? You're forgetting. We have a key to the photocopy room. That answers that. Let's go. Miss, it's time to go. I'm sorry, I didn't even oh, see where I was okay. going. No, no, that's my fault. There you go. Thank you. I'm sorry again. It's okay.
that's finished. Work hard. You realize you broke this case? You and me. Come on, let's hit the copy machine. The reporters at the register are going to eat their hearts out. Hey, somebody left a binder here. Ellen Cahill, there's her name. When was she in here? I'll listen to this. Dearest Larry, I love you with all my heart. Huh? Listen to this one. Larry, you drive me to school and you drive me wild with love? Oh, man, this is weird. Larry and Ellen Nichols? Mrs. Ellen Nichols? What is going on? More than we thought, that's for sure. Mr. Smith? In here! I got my binder by mistake. Is that my binder? Yes, it is. Would you give it to me, please? Ellen, we read the things you wrote about Larry. Let me have it. Why did you write that you loved Larry? You said you hated him. It's my property. Give it back. Ellen. I don't want to talk about it. You have to tell us what's going on. Otherwise, we can't continue to protect your identity. You promised. You promised because we thought you were telling the truth. You better tell us everything, now. I made it up. What? I made it all up. I made up everything. You mean, Larry never said anything to you? No. He never touched you? No, never. The bus accident had nothing to do with you. No, it didn't. It was just an accident. Why did you lie? I don't know. I was... I was just so mad at him. For what? Because I loved him! I've loved him ever since the sixth grade. I used to look at him day after day. I'm too afraid to even talk to him. And then there was the accident. And I saw her. His wife. Holding him. I didn't even know he was married. him. I really, I didn't mean for it to go this far. It just kept getting bigger and bigger. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh-huh. Oh, I agree. They worked very hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell them that. Oh, you bet I'll keep my fingers crossed. Uh-huh. Harold, thank you very much for calling. Goodbye. Come in. Come in. Come on in. I just got some happy news. Colin, Doug, because of your work this year on the paper, you have made the final round of the City Council Youth Achievement Award. Not bad, eh, Mr. Smith? No, not bad at all, sir. Colin, what's wrong? This will explain. The 
girl lied. That's right. About all of it. We wrote that retraction to set everybody straight. Doug and I are going to go down to the paper and give them the whole story. Yes. Yes, of course. You be sure to give them the name of your source, whoever she is. She's the one that created this mess in the first place. No, she didn't. Irresponsible reporting created this whole mess. Nothing's going to be gained by making that girl's name public. Mr. Smith is right, Dad. Besides, we made a promise to protect our source. And that promise has to be kept. What that girl needs now is some help. I'll try and see that she gets it. so bad about what I did to Larry. I'd really like to apologize to him. But I'm afraid to face him. Look, I don't blame you for being afraid, but you're gonna have to do it. You owe that to Larry and to his wife. Hey, would you like Mr. Gordon and I to drive you over to Larry's place? Yeah, that would be great. that they've printed this retraction, you know the bus driver's gonna get his job back. Are you gonna let Sarah ride on the bus with him? No way. I still think he's guilty. You know what they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Abuse the First Amendment, and you destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> 